Question number five, the name of Deputy Morley and Sullivan. Thank you, Ken Corda. Uh, my question is in relation to issues involving Cuba and the Cuban Five, the, the, the group of men known as the Cuban Five, particularly in view of recent activities on this Zunzuneo uh, program. Thank you. Mr. Costello. Uh, thank you, Deputy. <coughs> Ireland enjoys excellent bilateral relations with Cuba and I look forward to Irish-Cuban relations developing further in the period ahead. I also welcome the recent agreement by the European Union and Cuba to open negotiations on a political dialogue and cooperation agreement, which will provide a strong framework for the European Union's relationship with Cuba. I'm pleased to note that the first round of negotiations took place successfully in Havana from the 30th of April to the 1st of May last. I'm aware of the case to which the deputy refers of the three men serving prison sentence in the United States on charges related to their activities as unregistered agents of a foreign government and related offences. As this is a bilateral consular issue between the United States and the Cuban authorities, the government has no standing in the matter. With regard to the reports of the United States funding in the past for a mobile phone social networking project in Cuba, the Taunish and I have asked officials in our department to keep us informed on this issue. Thank you. Um, I think we could say that there has been some 50 years of rather unjust policy between Ireland, or between, sorry, between the United States and Cuba, and we saw that in the blockade. And my understanding is it's only about three or four countries in the United Nations who disagree with lifting that, that blockade. That particular programme, and I see some progress is being made on it, was really, uh, I think the aim was to destabilise the, the, the country, the government and the, the economy in Cuba. And going back to the, to the, the Cuban Five, Miami Five, arrested back in 1998 and it came from out of very serious movements by Cuban Americans to destabilize the Cuban government and the Cuban uh, economy and it led to the death of quite a number I think three and a half thousand Cuban um, nationals so the Cuban government took the option of um, getting five of their men to infiltrate these terrorist organizations in America they got the information they brought the information directly to the American authorities and instead of the American authorities arresting those who were involved in terrorist activities, they arrested these five men. And after a very lengthy trial, there were terms of imprisonment of 15 years to double life for the five. There were severe restrictions on visiting rights for their, their wives, they were denied, and visa requests for visits by family members were also restricted. So my question is, I accept what you said about the relationship, but we do have a good relationship with the American authorities, so can we not address this to the American authorities when we have the opportunity? Because there is an opportunity now if President Obama might give a pardon in his final year, but he won't unless he's asked by people with whom he has a relationship. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you Deputy. Well, the, <clears throat> the people that the uh, Deputy refers to are the original Cuban Five. Uh, they have been were sentenced in 2001, two of them already have been released, another is due for release in 2017, a further in 2014, and a further has, uh, the last person has other charges in relation to uh, other serious matters. Um, the thrust of the question is the link between the Cuban Five uh, and the activities they were engaged in in the United States, and now the suggestions that, in fact, the United States was also engaged in covert operations in relation to a social media platform. Uh, unfortunately, in relation to that particular report, and there's very little information in the public domain other than the Associated Press report of last month, uh, which provided uh, the story uh, that the United States aid, US aid, was engaged in providing a particular social network platform, and that this was uh, in Cuba, operating in Cuba from 2009 to 2012. We have been in touch with the Cuban authorities in relation to the matter, uh, and we have asked our officials to find out what we can in relation to it. But at this point in time, unfortunately, the information that is available is extremely limited. Right, okay, one of the five could end up spending the rest of his life in jail. 
and I think that is a very serious issue. At this point in time, the United Nations Commission on Human Rights, various international human rights groups, trade unions, legal experts, Nobel Prize winners, religious organisations, <coughs> members of parliament in various countries and Amnesty International all feel that there is a terrible injustice here. There was a commission of inquiry in London back in March into this whole issue. There were former Chief Justices from India and South Africa and from France. And what they, going back into that trial, these were their findings that there are serious concerns about whether any of these people had the full benefit of the fundamental human right to a fair and speedy trial. All of the, of the five were placed in solitary confinement for about 17 months before the trial. They didn't have the opportunity to consult with their legal representatives. The trial was held in a part of Miami where, according to three of the judges in the American uh, Court of Appeals, a fair trial could not be guaranteed. The five human beings were certain of their fate only eight years after the trial in the district court. I think I think there are grounds to ask President Obama to issue a pardon before he finishes in office. And I know, Minister uh, Gilmore, this was something that you had been very supportive of when you were in opposition. And it's just a request to put the request to ask for that pardon. Minister. Well, the issues in question um, in terms of the charges, they were related to the activities, as I said earlier, of unregistered agents of foreign government and the offences uh, arising from that. And as of course, this is a bilateral uh, consular issue between the United States and the Cuban authorities, and the Irish government has no formal standing uh, on this particular matter. But it is a matter that we have concern about. It is a matter that my officials and the Connors' officials are engaged in, and it is a matter that we can raise. Uh, certainly, I spoke to the Cuban ambassador uh, last last month. He didn't raise the issue himself, uh, but it is certainly a matter that I will raise with him in the next meeting. Thank you.